Hi, I'm Natasha Ryan, and this is our video series, Strong, Safe, and True, where Premier Risk Solutions sits down with security experts like Rich over here to talk about what's going on in the security sector and how it can impact your company, employees, tips on how to make everyone just feel safer in general. And Rich, I know you have a long history in law enforcement, and I want you to tell me all about that. Right now, your current role is you are a corporate security director for a big healthcare system, and we are talking healthcare today with Rich. But Rich, give me a little bit on your background. Sure. Natasha, first of all, nice to share some time with you this afternoon. Thank you. Thank coming you. To you. Yeah, coming to you from uh, Ohio. A little bit about me, uh, 30 years in law enforcement uh, on the West Coast, just outside of San Francisco. Very fortunate in my career as emergency manager and uh, retired out at the command level rank in the police department uh, for a city of, of 50,000. And uh, in my career, uh, very lucky to be selected to attend the FBI National Academy. West Point Leadership uh, Program and uh, various other uh, executive level training uh, sessions. Uh, I left uh, law enforcement in 2010, uh, joined uh, Stanford, uh, where I helped uh, co-champion their development of their human behavioral threat assessment program. And then from there, I transitioned to what I've been doing in the last 10 years, and that's healthcare corporate security. Okay, Rich, and healthcare, you know, we've seen a lot of issues, right? You've, you've had to deal with not only protecting a vaccine, but dealing with, with patients who are sick with, with COVID and their family not being able to get to see them. Just so much tension, I'm sure, goes on in that industry right now during the pandemic. So I want to bring up the PowerPoint because we've talked a lot about this and uh, things you've seen. And I'm so interested to hear your, hear your thoughts here. Again, this is Rich Simfio. We're going to go ahead and fast forward here if I can get it to work. Okay, security trends in healthcare. And we're gonna to go to our first slide here. So talking more about that escalation of tension, you know, you've seen in your industry, you know, what is it that you've witnessed the most of? Sure, well, first, uh, you know, let me set the table a little bit, Natasha. You know, yeah. a little known fact in healthcare is that you can take every entity in the United States, retail, uh, even public safety, for example, uh, and uh, private enterprises, public enterprises, and you can combine all those injury rates due to assault, as documented, and it still doesn't equal to what occurs in healthcare. For example, uh, few people may know that nurses suffer the same injury rate due to assault as New Jersey state troopers, as one study uh, showed uh, in, in the past. So that's an example of uh, some of the aggression that occur in healthcare. And there's a lot of reasons for that. And we can save that for another time. But it's safe to say that really when you think about it, uh, when you go to a hospital and you have to spend some time there for treatment, uh, it's not a pleasant experience oftentimes. Uh, and it can be very uh, tra traumatic for for people and, and the family that goes there. So uh, because of this, uh, healthcare does experience uh, a lot of aggression and that takes the form of threats, uh, weapons that can come into a facility and just out and out assaults on staff. So trying to strike the proper security balance to uh, keep everyone safe, including the patient and their family has always been paramount. What's happened since uh, COVID, since the pandemic started uh, sometime over a year ago now, in reality, all those things that already existed became much more challenging. Uh, so it became magnified in partnership, unfortunately, with a lot of community unrest. Uh, a lot of uh, people in our country right now today are not in the, in the mood, so to speak, to follow policy, for example. You know, I just read recently where the FAA issued a very significant fine. Normally, FAA does not uh, issue fines, but they issued a $25,000 fine for somebody who refused to wear their mask on an airplane, which forced the plane to turn around. So that's an example outside of healthcare, where uh, people are just not in the mood uh, to follow rules. Some, the vast majority, yeah. do, but there are some that are going to be very acute in saying uh, no. As you look at the pandemic and as it developed, uh, from my experiences, it produced a, a heightened level of anxiety in our country. 
that then that then was uh, coupled with uh, what happened in Minnesota uh, with that officer involved a, a death of a prisoner. That led to a lot of nationwide civil unrest, a lot of rioting, a lot of damage to the property. And then coupled with the added layer of uh, a hotly contested presidential election where yeah. both sides were really entrenched and that led to a, a lot of protest. In addition to that, you know, healthcare is no different and it's not immune from, from most other entities in that uh, an economic downturn or struggle can result in some layoffs. And in fact, there were some reduction in force uh, in healthcare. And then coupled with the increase in patients and the difficulties in, in, in trying to treat COVID, that led to this perfect storm, so to speak, uh, that uh, produced a lot of uh, difficulties from a security perspective in keeping an organization, the patients and the uh, team members safe. Yeah, I, I can't imagine. And it sounds so weird to hear that there's a reduction in healthcare workers during a pandemic created by a health issue, medical issue. Um, yes. Talk a little bit about, um, you know, you just did, but specifically more about things that you saw where you your staff was challenged. Yeah, for example, uh, visitation had to be uh, restricted. Uh, and in some cases for, for quite a period of time, there was no visitation. So when a family member is hospitalized, what we're all used to in our collective memories and in my lifetime as well, we're gonna be able to visit them. We're gonna yeah. be able to provide comfort to them, right. uh, a source of support to get healthy again. And then unfortunately, uh, some people are terminal when they go to the hospital. And we want to pay our respects and say goodbye. And all of a sudden, there's no visitation at all. Uh, as an example, we can't even come into the hospital and go to a gift shop or a cafeteria uh, because they're all closed. Right. So you had this very firm, hard stop on traditionally things like visitation that provided comfort to everybody involved. Newborn baby, for example. Uh, can you imagine uh, you're a mother, you're giving birth to a child and you want your significant other there with you, but that can't happen. I can't imagine, no. Exactly. So what that does what did was create a layer of stress uh, for people that were already under duress. Rightly so, by the way, these are, these are protocols that needed to be instituted. But that being said, uh, when some people were told that they could not visit or they could not come into the hospital, what I've seen, you know, elsewhere is uh, a firm note of that and argumentation. And in some cases, uh, people uh, were pushed by uh, and, and people forced themselves into uh, the healthcare environment, very similar to the FAA example I just cited where somebody refuses to wear a mask on a plane. And then in that situation, uh, they actually assaulted a flight attendant. Uh, yeah. So that's that's the corresponding thing as well, too, where we've seen uh, aggression towards staff. Basically, the messenger is saying, for everyone's safety, we can't do this, but then the messenger is victimized. And, and uh, that's not good for everybody. And you said you've also seen an increase of weapons coming into facilities, so you've seen more weapons? Yeah, and not talking about my own facility. But uh, yeah. th there, there has been an increase. Uh, there was a hospital in, in Kentucky where a security officer was in a confrontation and their weapon was taken away. Uh, and I've observed other trends uh, in healthcare nationwide where there's been an increase in weapons uh, being brought into the facility. And I will tell you in uh, a previous place I was associated with, um, in, in, the, in the first 48 hours of implementing uh, metal detection, for example, uh, we found uh, 165 prohibited items. Uh, so wow. uh, it, it's an example of some of the things that can become in that can cause concern uh, for safety. And it's such a heightened state of emotions usually when you're at a hospital. So it's exactly. not a place to have those weapons. Okay. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit now about protecting the vaccine, right? So you have to prepare for potential threats. What does that look like? 
Yeah, so first thing we do is, is pay attention, partner with law enforcement, first of all, uh, paying attention to uh, intelligence reports and trends that, that are happening uh, around the country. Surprisingly so far to me, uh, it's been somewhat benign in that area, although there have been some occurrences uh, where, you, and you can look at how many times, uh, for example, on a Black Friday sale, uh, people are, are lining up so outside to, to, to take advantage of uh, these prices. Oh, yeah. And then you read there's a big fight or there's the last TV there and a big melee breaks out. Uh, a new Apple uh, phone comes out and, you know, you're cutting in line and those types of things. We're all familiar with that. Unfortunately, it's kind of become part of the, uh, the norm in our country. Uh, so uh, anytime you get a group of people together to line up for anything, in this case, we're talking about uh, vaccine, uh, there's the potential for problems that and some people have been very vocal and made it very clear that they believe the uh, pandemic is a hoax okay. and uh, certainly uh, I don't see it that way and I think most don't but because of that then it's not out of the realm of possibility for someone to try to uh, vandalize uh, a vehicle transporting or harm the product in some way or post up outside of vaccination site, especially as we begin to roll this out to the public more to a broader base. Those are the type of things that can happen. And, and speaking of that, I just pulled this up. So, you know, you really have to pay attention to where that asset is at all times. Exactly. And uh, so when transporting, for example, uh, it's good obviously to keep the route confidential, but then have a backup plan. Because accidents can happen. We can, we can just get an unintentional car accident. We can get a yeah. flat tire, whatever it happens to be. And then, of course, with any uh, sensitive item, in this case, uh, vaccine, uh, it's important to uh, have uh, redundancy built into the system. Uh, this is a product that needs to be uh, refrigerated at very cold temperatures. So planning for refrigeration breakdown, for example, those types of things, or a theft, uh, th there was uh, an incident uh, in our country where uh, a clinician did intentionally damage some vaccine files, mm -hmm. very small, but still, um, it's hard to predict what uh, people will do. So my perspective is you have to plan for everything. I think that's a pretty good perspective. All right, let's talk a little bit. Um, you know, you did a little bit about crowd control. How do you make sure... Like, how do you make sure it doesn't escalate to like that fight over the iPhone? Like, how do you ensure safety of the people coming to get a vaccine? Yeah, so basically, to me, the principle is time and distance. Time and distance is either your friend or it's your enemy. So you can promote time and distance by being aware, partnering with law enforcement, uh, observing what's taking place in the community, and then determine if your facilities are at risk. Uh, for example, roads can be blocked to your facility. That would be one thing. Uh, but another one could be uh, an event that spills over into the healthcare environment. Uh, we see uh, buildings uh, in Portland, for example, that were severely damaged uh, during some civil unrest there. So preparing your facility for that. And in healthcare, traditionally, that takes the form of advanced awareness and lockdown before you're overrun by a group of people. Now, to my knowledge, that has not happened uh, yet mm -hmm. in, in healthcare, at least in, in recent times. Right. But that being said, to have a quick lockdown facility uh, in place, the ability to do that, to have enough uh, security staff on hand to post up in entryways and to shut down your facility as fast as possible provides the, the best protection from my perspective, along with having a very robust uh, video system uh, I think begins to set the foundation for a strong reaction to that kind of situation. Rich, if you had to give advice to, you know, a healthcare security director just starting out or just putting a program together, like what would your top three tips be right now in present times, knowing what you know? Uh, understanding, especially if you're new to healthcare, understanding that, that it is a very dynamic, uh, emotional environment. Uh, with a, a lot of different people involved and where the patient experience, patient safety and the delivery of care are really vitally important. So number one, understand uh, the profession that you're in. Uh, I think secondly, partner 
with uh, someone in the community at another healthcare facility, or perhaps it's a business contact or security firm like PRS, where uh, you can begin to understand and learn a little bit about what your responsibilities will be uh, in in the long term. And then I think thirdly, uh, and I've said this uh, for a long time now, you can have all the protocols in place that you want. You can have lockdown procedures. You can have video systems. You can have panic alarms. You can have electronic access monitoring. You can have all that. The fact of the matter is all those can and will be defeated at some point. So to me, uh, where the greatest protection comes is from people. Uh, and, and I think that's the most important thing for any new director in any kind of business, but especially healthcare where you develop those partnerships inside with your critical stakeholders. You develop the trust through your expertise. And I'll just, to me, if I want to sum it up to one thing for you, I would say yeah, this. Yeah, sum it up. Yeah, the, the most important thing uh, from my perspective is security, especially in healthcare, is in the business of providing comfort when people are uncomfortable. I like so, that, providing yeah, so, comfort. Yes, uh, and, and that's where you develop trust. Trust equals credibility. Credibility equals resources. And you're creating a product that people want uh, inside their walls because of the comfort that it provides. I love that, Rich. And I kind of went through my PowerPoint fast, but here at Premier okay. Solutions, we offer a bunch of different services. We can do security consulting risk assessments, we can offer security personnel on site. So anything we can do to help, our goal is to help. And as Rich said, provide comfort in uncomfortable situations. I'm totally stealing that line. If you have any information, <laughs> if you have any questions, here's a phone number or information, please feel free to contact us. Rich, thank you so much. This was really great to hear everything going on in the healthcare industry. It, it's very interesting and good to know. And I just appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. Thank you. Here to serve and look forward to continuing to do so. Thank you, Rich. Okay. And thanks to all of you for tuning in. Continue to come back to premierrisksolutions.com because we are going to continue this video series. In the meantime, I'm Natasha Ryan. Stay strong, safe, and true.